I'm going to show you quickly how to open up a SVG, uh, convert it to cut lines and add a background to it. Uh, most of you are hybrid scrappers that love to include your digital backgrounds. So this is very easy. First up, I'm going to go File, Open. I'm going to open up my SVG file. This is the document your December pockets. I'm going to click OK. That's going to open that up for me. And as you can see, they are one group. If I go to cut, open the cut style window, I click on that. You see there is no cut no cut lines. So to um, rectify that, just click on your SVG files and then you can select cut edge. If you select cut edge it just shows you the outer cutting lines or you can do cut and then it actually does the uh, scoring lines as well. Okay so that's done. Now what I want to do is um, add backgrounds. So whatever uh, viewer you use to view your your files like um, windows and stuff uh, just use that and it's just basically drag and drop previously you were able to do it differently but uh, that didn't work oh, you know what I just realized I need to first ungroup otherwise it's gonna do them all one pattern okay I'm gonna go ungroup and there you can see with the grey lines it has ungrouped everything. Everything is on its own layer basically. Okay, so I don't want that. I want the pockets to stay together. So I'm going to go object. I'm going to select one pocket with the score lines and go group. And then I just do that with each of them. Object group. And that's command G. Or control G I think in... Windows. Okay, so all of them are grouped. And okay, now they are easy to move around. No score lines or anything will get lost. Okay, now you are ready to add a background. I'm using um, some of the papers I did for the uh, Little Things collection I did with Nicole. Um, I'm totally in love with this collection. The colors, everything, it's just so pretty. And um, it's just bright and fun and me and as you can see they are gorgeous to die for okay so now to show you how easy this is I'm just going to select a background and drag it onto my screen onto the pocket I want to decorate it with as you can see as you move over it actually does that where it does the depths because it's not on a, a actual cutting file but there it is on a cutting file and then, hmm, I want to do this one too. I love nice uh, plain pockets. And then, oh, I have to do a wood grain. I mean, hello, wood. <laughs> okay, now, there you go. And then, oh, I want to do the flowers. There we go, and then polka dotty. Come on, okay, doesn't like that one. There we go. Okay, so now I can close this. Okay, so each of them has a pattern. Okay, so you obviously want to arrange them as you want to. Uh, print them out okay this one as you can see some of the patterns are perfect at the size that you just inserted them some of them might do with a little bit of tweaking either up or down oh there's one that lost its uh, cutting lines its uh, scoring lines oops it's okay just go edit undo edit Control Z, Control Z. Okay, so that obviously didn't group. Okay, object group. Okay. 
So now we want to go in and basically edit the patterns. So this one, for instance, hmm, maybe I want to flip it. Let's go advanced options. And here you've got horizontal, you've, um, under fill pattern, there at the top, you get advanced options and you can get mirror patterns, horizontal, nah, vertical, yeah, maybe, trying to visualize it. Okay, fixed, stretch, nah, don't want to do that, that's too fixed. Okay, here you can go rotate, 90 degrees, 270, 180, and back to zero. Okay, you can also scale the pattern. Say, I want to do a 200, a larger triangle. Or I can scale it down, but when you drag and drop it into your uh, cutting files, it actually... You can see a little bit of repeat there. It actually um, scales your pattern to exactly the same size as the cutting file. So I won't recommend going smaller, but definitely bigger. And then you can also go pan pattern. And it actually has this little uh, icon over there. And you just use this to move it around. I want a little bit of that texty texture and the paint splats and oh, it's okay. yeah that looks good you can also set the transparency here at the moment it's zero so it's a full full on opaque whatever you call it so as soon as you go lighter it actually it's going to go lighter the pattern but we want to keep it 100% <coughs> Excuse me, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so this wood one, I would really like to make that one a little bit bigger. So I'm going to scale it up. And then I do want to pan the pattern because I want that um, wooden uh, uh, wood knot a little bit up. As you can see, there's actually the border of the paper is there. So I'm just going to line it up with my scoring line. Okay, good stuff. Then, this one's perfect just as it is. I like it just that way. Then, this one I want to do a little bit bigger. Just a little. Okay, and then let's do pan pattern. I want to do it a little bit offside. There you go. And then this one I also want to do a little bit bigger. Uh, 150. Yeah, that's a good 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 size okay so you have it depends on what size of uh, silhouette you do have but I mean I have the regular smaller one that the one that cuts eight eight and a half inches by 11 so I have to think about placement and stuff and how I'm gonna print it and all of that so let's start with that um, and then this one I want to rotate. So you go in. Let's replicate. Always get confused with the stuff. <laughs> Let's rotate. <laughs> okay, so this one I just want to rotate 90 degrees. Just to drop it in there. As you can see, there's a little bit of a white here showing you it won't print out. So you need to get it. where you have as much um, coverage and stuff. You can also go underneath your um, page tools. Um, it has a... Where is that thing? Ah, oh, there it is. Sorry, it's registration masts in that corner over there. Okay, so let's do show registration marks. This is your best bet on how to fit them all in. And looking at this, I might actually just cancel the third one and just try and... I have cut line where uh, in the grayed out area it did actually print out fine. It's just safety's sake. You don't want to 
do do that. And people have different printers and stuff, so it all depends. But just move it down until you are out of the gray. And there you go, you're ready to send this to your printer and cut it out. I'm going to show you my end results uh, after the video, so um, just hang in there. Thank you guys, bye. My uh, pockets, that if you look closely, there is these black lines. Let's zoom in there. these black lines and you don't want that to print out and um, I actually realized when I printed mine out it's printing out so what's the solution how can you stop that from happening so I am going to go object ungroup which is command U okay so there again it's ungrouped then I'm going to just select just select my um, scoring lines I'm going to go object group then I'm going to line tools or the line open the line color window okay as you can see there it's very unclear but they've got the black marked so I don't want any color there I want it to be clear so if I select the clear voila it's gone but if you go to your cut window it's still there so that's just one workaround for this so then you just go ahead again and select the whole image or the whole cutting file object group and there you go problem solved hope this helps